And welcome back to our coverage of ONS 2017. We're here with Gerhard Visa. He's the Chief Executive Officer at Frings. And Gerhard, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I want to talk today about our service function chaining and its relationship back to network functions virtualization. But before mm -hmm. we do that, yeah. give us just a quick rundown, sort of the elevator pitch of what Frings is. Yeah, Frings is a uh, company based on open source networking. We, uh, uh, we work out of uh, Bratislava in Slovakia, Central Europe. And uh, we have a product uh, based on uh, Open Daylight, an Open Daylight distribution, and a FIDO distribution that we just announced this week. So again, the relationship between service function chaining and NFE, maybe give us an example. Yeah. Um, think about it very simply, uh, that you want to force packets through a certain path, through a certain number of service functions in your network. And like, this could be a router that you want to start off with, and then a firewall, and then maybe some kind of packet inspection as a next step. Um, so what you want to, you want to enforce those packets to go that specific path through the network. That's basically a, a service function that you want to establish. Now in the past, usually people would do that with physical equipment, and it was pretty cumbersome to set up. Now of course, uh, uh, the kickoff to ONS 2017 was a keynote by Martin Casado talking yeah. about how to really make SDN real. Yeah. How do you make service function chaining real? How do you adopt that? Yeah, I think the, the, the primary thing here is that People were focusing on the 10 year out, very sophisticated, very uh, um, you know, hard to, to build cases. But the reality is that we are focusing on and that our customers really are driving us towards is a very simple scenarios. Um, like our customers are, have network connections to other business partners, extranets, um, and they have to terminate those and they want to force them through a firewall, make sure that they can only access resources that they have approved. And um, when they were building these things with physical routers, um, it's very hard to orchestrate, takes them a lot of time, and by the first step, virtualizing that in virtual machines, and then automating that, we can, do, uh, we can help them a lot in streamlining that process, saving money, and getting better quality in that whole setup. Of course, container uh, service chaining is an integral part to what you do. Uh, I want to talk about that relationship as well, but before we do that, just for our audience, give us a definition of containerization. Um, so, uh, many of our customers, the first step of uh, virtualization was taking physical devices and packing them in virtual machines. And that's a, that's a logical step, that makes a lot of sense. It's somewhat easy to do, it basically takes something out of a physical shell, puts it in a, in a VM. And the next step is, to um, take those processes out and run them in a container. So that's a somewhat larger step uh, in, in terms of functionality, but it buys them a lot in terms of reuse of resources. They can get much more out of one single bare metal entity than they would be with VMs. Now, I know you already talked about this a little bit before, but there's some existing approaches and potential solutions and benefits of service function chaining. Mm. Uh, maybe give us another example, possibly. Yeah, uh, so, um, you know, I, I think um, what, what we see from customers, real problems that we solve with customers is um, when they were, um, they were connecting devices like load balancers or uh, like packet filters, they had to go and recable stuff. Um, they had to, 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 to manually configure devices um, to make sure that um, packets would go only over a specific VLAN into a specific device and um, and all of that through our automation or through the automation that's available in the open source, um, we can help them in that process. Container, so virtualize it in VMs and then automate it and then the next step we can containerize it. By the way, uh, containerization, container, container service chaining, how far back does this go? When was that introduced? I feel, I feel like it was introduced just a three, four years ago, but in your industry, yeah. I'm sure you've known about it for a lot longer. Yeah, I think there's the, the big guys have been using containers for a whole, a whole while now. I think they've been using it in somewhat different contexts, and I think they, they didn't particularly build service chains. But now that we are basically looking at networking functions of enterprise or telco networking functions, and are looking at the efficiency gains that containers offer, we're trying to use containers for this service function chaining as well. So I think for the service function chaining, it's fairly new to kind of uh, take that approach. Um, I think also the, the, the service functions available in containers are just about to pop up. And um, I think so we feel we are pretty, pretty early with that. So are there any metrics to uh, gauge the benefits yeah. uh, of, of container, con uh, container service chaining? Yeah, yeah. So what we, the, the value that we've added to this open source um, um, 
environments is uh, we've added an analytics agent. Mm. And that allows our customers to kind of take information out of the box, uh, look at how many packets, how many bytes, uh, IP fix, that means uh, which application is talking to which application, and um, also get log data out of the system and, uh, and use that in their analytics framework. So yes, absolutely. Well, it was great uh, speaking with you. Uh, I'm sure a lot of runway on uh, talking about containers, especially at a show like this. Yeah. Uh, so it was good to have you, and thanks for your time. Super, thanks Abe. And again, uh, for all of our coverage here at ONS 2017, you can go to tinow.org. So long. <laughs>